things. So the last few slides you guys have all seen before, you know, so, so that means bringing together psychology and social science, computational social science, data science, bring all of these together, you know, is really quite crucial for you to understand truly how you're going to build anything that can capture the, the fact that humans shift, you know, their behaviors over time. And that means that you want to understand the structural definition of what happens to them. You want to know how the once they've engaged, how the way in which they've engaged have changed their world structurally. So that means that at some point a human would have, at a point in time, live in a certain home, work in a certain job, drive a certain car, eat certain kind of food, and for a period of time that will be true. So you want to understand the structural relationships between those elements. But what you also want to understand is how the time changes over time. So that means that you want to know that how do they engage with the environment around them. And that show evidence of the kind of personality that they are. So you can see that if somebody is really interested in, in novel things, they will be more experiential. They will go try out different options. They'll click more, they search more. They, but if somebody is, is just interested in, in, in taking a certain action, it means that they'll be very specific around the time of the day, what they purchase, when they exit, where they move on, you'll see evidence of them taking those kind of decisions. And that means that what you want to figure out eventually is how you then build an automated personality tracker. So in our case, this sits in our engine. So we, that we've been working on that from a technology point of view. Doesn't mean that's the only theory of how things should work. But you want to have time as one of your measures to figure out when somebody engages with, say, a digital app and they, and they spend an hour to click on one item, it might mean that they're completely distracted. But if somebody is talking to somebody on a phone and they're having a conversation and they keep quiet for a minute after every time that there's a conversation, you know that there's something wrong or, or maybe you're not explaining or there's seconds of, of wait. And then if somebody keeps on inter in interrupting, say, a call center agent and talking and very excited about something or they're very upset, you'll be able to quickly figure out what you need to do because you can track that time differences that are normally like Daniel was saying, culturally embedded. And you need to figure out how your algorithm then needs to calibrate to that personality within that particular situation that you that you're trying that you're trying to solve, and then I mean, yeah, the last item is just you know what we call reframing your ability to kind of take all of this thinking that we talked about, put yourself in the future. If you apply some of this and you get benefit from this, would your world be better than if you don't have it there? I mean, I think that's really just kind of maybe the final point from here.